We're starting with a technical challenge, one of Eric's passed down through the generations. Any, uh, any advice, Eric? Well, timing is going to be very important. Wow, succinct and frightening. So I'm going to have you two step out for this one so we can let the baker start. Eric and Lori would like you to make three identical masa. I'll have you lift under your shmatas and look for your ingredient list. You've got 25 minutes. Get set. Bake. This is sifted, right? <laughs> I'm sifting. told them about timing. Timing is everything in this challenge. According to the rules of Chometz, you have only 18 minutes from when you mix the flour with water to get it into the oven. And then you come out with at the end of a bake, something that looks golden and is crisp and has nice even perforations. Well, it's very important to see the snap. It is central to the Seder and central to the Passover story. It'll be interesting to see how close they can come to the perfect matzo. Hmm. Delicious. Three eighths of a cup? Yeah. It's a good thing you used that. I wasn't even paying attention. That's great. should be rolled thin to achieve an even bake. I would have preferred to do this with a pasta roller, I think, but... <laughs> you know, because they were doing this on the run, they didn't have a tremendous amount of time to do this. Does it have anything to do with how it bakes? Uh, it will sort of add a little crisp, I think. A little crisp. That's what I'm, I'm hoping. Quality control issues here. <laughs> God, this is a hard dough. This is the most awful dough I've ever seen in my life. I am feeling pretty good because I have one matzah in the oven. Oh, really? I think you're So at least one will come out. So it's not just burning. Yeah. It does. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think it is yet. Okay, my first mistake was I did not manage the soft pliable dough. <laughs> <laughs> This one I think looks okay. Um, I'm <laughs> I feel happy about one of my mugs. Time's up. Please bring your face up and place that behind the photo of yourself. Lori and Eric will now see who has baked the perfect matzo. Good morning, bakers. Good morning. So we'll see how you've done on the technical challenge today to produce three perfect matzo. So we take this matzo here, <laughs> and maybe we should... <laughs> so this matzo has a bit more flexibility than you would like in a matzo. Very chewy. Okay, let's go on to number two here. 
So this matzah clearly has clear perforations Great in each perforations. one. Let's dive in and check for the snap, okay? Yes. Ready? <laughs> this, this, this has a little bit more crispiness. A little crispiness, especially near the edges. If, I think this bake would have been just maybe, a bit better with a little more time. Maybe at three or four minutes. All right, let's go on to matzah number three. So this, well, clearly, this is browner, somewhat more attractive. Well, why don't we start with this one? Let's see if we can find the snap here. Oh, that is what you want to see in a matzo here is a snap. Mm. Crunchy, good taste. Lori and Eric must now decide who has baked the perfect matzo. Third place? Third place. <laughs> this one here. I'm not owning up to that. <laughs> Very good. And in second place, this one here. And, and in first, first place, place. <laughs> well done. Um, I'm feeling okay. I, I'm happy that I won. It wasn't my best bake. But I do wish the oven had been working because that would have been helpful. <laughs> but I'm, I'm hoping to be a little bit more consistent uh, for the showstopper today. I have a lot of moving parts. Hopefully it will all come together. Uh, I am energized and ready for the next challenge. I once again will be making something I've never made before, but that's the way I operate. <laughs> Welcome back, bakers. So, Eric and Lori would like for you guys to put on the Showstopper Challenge, a kosher for Passover flourless souffle roll. But there's a catch. Your souffle roll must embody part of the story of Passover. It can be any part of the story of Passover, and you can use any ingredients except for flour. On your mark, get set, bake! Today's challenge is a flourless souffle roll. I love a great souffle roll. I make one every year for my Passover. Uh, the baker's challenge today will be to make the roll light and fluffy, to not have it crack, and to fill it with a delicious cream filling. Uh, and I can't wait to see how they tell the Passover story in their decorations. This showstopper should be amazing. So what have we got going here? Hi, um, I am making an almond See, roll cake. Um, no flour, about flour, it's almond flour. Almond so, flour? Yes. I'm actually going to roll this sideways instead of lengthwise so that the spiral is visible from the top. Topping Lisa's unusual rolled almond souffle will be a complete Seder plate. I've ever seen anything like that. Yeah, me either. Wow. So <laughs> well, good luck with it. What a great idea. Good morning, Laura. Good morning. How are how is your bake coming? Uh, well, it's not baking yet, but it's <laughs> gonna dishwash those shells? So what's going to be in the chocolate roll? Some sort of new thing, uh, coffee-flavored mascarpone. Laurel's new souffle will be chocolate rolled with coffee mascarpone and decorated with interpretations of the plagues. Really? This is yeah. not going to be good. Uh, so I am making a traditional chocolate souffle roll, but I am doing it sort of to tell the story of Exodus 12, which is both the end of the Passover, the end of the plague, but also when we get all the rules about Passover. Daniel's Exodus inspired souffle will be covered in a ricotta cream and drizzled with a raspberry coulis. This is a rules roll? I suppose. Wow, that's a very oh, unusual that thing. That sounds very educational. To make a light springy souffle, the bakers will need to gently fold stiff egg whites into their batter. Okay. 
There's rioting. Yeah, that's okay. I'm just, I'm just telling you. Very oh, okay. delicious. Very. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah! That will be the inside of the cake. Good, like a um, minute or two longer. What do we do? Good thing I don't have any baking experience. <laughs> yeah. What's going on here? Oh, I'm cooling my cake. While Lisa's cake is cool, the other bakers are just getting theirs in the oven. <laughs> I don't know how this works. My little um, sachet on the deck yeah. helped to cool things down. <laughs> Is it a clean towel? Yes, I used it on the okay. <laughs> So I want to roll it this way then. Tastes pretty good. Very almondy. I like it more than. Oh, here's the espresso explosion. <laughs> That's how I'm calling mine. <laughs> you wait till the you see that. The leading tower of pizza juice. With their cakes cooling, the bakers turn to decorations. I'll put sunglasses on this guy. Cattle disease? Can one guy have Do more than cattle one place? Disease? Oh yeah, I gotta put beasts in. Wild beasts. What's different than cattle disease? I don't know cattle disease. Okay. <laughs> well, Leah, you choose what you want. <laughs> All right, if you do that. Wild beasts. What if yeah, cattle disease? <laughs> I have, I have so much. How much time have we got left? That's <laughs> nice to be Okay. How are we gonna do this? Maybe I should assemble on the plate. Yes. Is there any more? Let's think of it. <laughs> you know those famous wafer rolls? What about yeah. if you yeah. cut if you cut them and and yes. stack them? Oh, stack them like an icebox. Cake. Yeah. I don't know if you want yeah, here's the probably. How does one of these <laughs> out? Does it work? This is a disaster. <laughs> Unmitigated. Thank you for the comments there. <laughs> a mitigated disaster. <laughs> Maybe it's mitigated. <laughs> <laughs> this is exceedingly difficult. This was actually the intention all along. You know, that's the thing, is you have to be adaptive. <laughs> exactly! Exactly! <laughs> you know, you can't stick to plans that don't work. What do they call whoopie pies? Yeah! That's what it looks like. So, in the Rosetta Stone, there's a recipe. Like, let me do that. So, you know, in the same way that Hammurabi's code was found inscribed on a big piece of, of stone in Babylon, the ruins of Babylon, but alongside actually recipes for ancient beer and such, they've actually recently um, discovered some cuneiform, some ancient uh, papyrus texts that have uh, a recipe that's very similar to this. It doesn't Raspberry settlement it was all better. <laughs> It was a lot of fun. The competition was tough. Well, it was a challenge. My cake didn't cook properly. The edges were fine, but not the center. 
So when I cut it down the middle, there was goo in the middle. And then I had to recook some, and I didn't recook all of it, which I should have done. But I found that fondant is like a girdle, and <laughs> I used that to keep it all together. <laughs> Challenges, definitely. What I appreciated is we had, it was a really collaborative uh, feeling in the tent. So we all, you know, we're in it together, but it came out exactly as I wanted. Um, in the end, so I, I'm, I'm proud of what I'm putting forward to the judges. Look at the detail here. Now we have to now cut into it, it and see. So when we cut in, we should see a very different look than a typical yes. souffle roll. The, the filling looks beautiful. It looks like she may have lost some of the definition. <laughs> Let's see how it tastes. See if it tastes as good as it looks. The almond mm. taste comes through very nicely. From and, uh, good bake. This is enormously successful. Well done. Well done. The, the presentation is just extraordinary. Just, so we're gonna have to cut into it and see what it tastes like. Good layers here. Yeah. Very good, well filled layers. And the souffle has good bake on it. The chocolate <laughs> taste comes through very well. And Delicious. Well, this, this is quite extraordinary dark. as well. Sleek elegant. roll, elegant roll amidst an entire beautifully garden, composed. beautifully composed garden. I think we've got to cut into this. The ricotta comes through very well. That's pretty really good. It's sort of a light chocolate. I think it works. Well, delicious. All, all the bakers did an amazing job. So, do you guys have an idea of who will uh, well, this be the is next star baker? Very difficult. The technical challenge really did separate the bakers a bit, but uh, this is a really quite remarkable uh, recovery for everyone. They really answered our challenge. Shall we go deliver the news? Well, have you made up your mind? I think I have. So, bakers, what a wild morning we've had. <laughs> this week's Star Baker and the winner of this contest is, for the first time ever, all three of you! Yeah. <laughs> very, very happy. I am uh, happy. I think we all baked really well today. Um, I'm ready to go home and take the rest. Well, it was a tough fought contest. I really thought that it was clear who the winner would be after the technical. But I must say, everyone outperformed our expectation in the showstopper. There's just no way to make a decision there. It was remarkable. It was a true first on the great Yiddish baking show. Oh, I'm exhausted. That was so much fun. And I'm going to go home and order myself a mixer. <laughs>